So today we were in a special place for me, it's Kenton Haste, this is on Sackville Street, so Savile Row is just up there and Piccadilly's over here. Why is it a special place for me? Well, Terry Haste is my tailor. Today we're going to do a fitting as well as a looking at the brand itself. I've been working with Terry for 12 years and he has lauded the world over for being one of the world's finest tailors. So hopefully you're going to get an insight as to why. And here we are with my dear friend Terry Haste. Terry. Nice to see you. How are you, darling? Fine, thank you. Good. Um, Terry and I have known each other for a very, very long time. Let me tell you a little bit about Terry. He apprenticed in Anderson and Shepherd in, well, before the war. The Boer War. The Boer War, before the Boer War. And uh, so what you learn at a place like Anderson and Shepherd is unconstructed tailoring. Then, later on in his career, Terry was the managing director and headcutter at Huntsman, which is the master of structured tailoring. So, Terry's career has spanned the sort of gamut of tailoring, and that means that when you come to somewhere like Kent Haste, you are, I mean, you look at somewhere in the middle, what are we looking at when it comes to you as a tailor, what it is that you bring to the market, and why people keep coming to you? Well, yeah, I first got into tailoring because I, you know, I've always wanted to be in tailoring. Um, I'm given the opportunity to start with Anderson Shepherd, which I love, but I've never been a great lover of that more unconstructed look. I wanted something much more constructed. Um, so I spent my time at Hawes and Curtis with John Kent, and you know, we had a great time. I loved that sort of style, and, and from there I went to Tommy Nutter. Tommy Nutter was the same style of tailoring with a more constructed, more form-fitting shoulder. And, uh, you know, again, the sleeves being more fitted. And then from there, obviously, I went to Huntsman and then started on my own back with John again after being away from him for 20 years. But what I do like a more... I don't like a real stiff jacket. So jackets are quite fluid and nice and comfortable to wear, but I can't stand that really stiff jacket where it's sort of bulked up a bit which some people do on the other hand i do like it the shoulders to be st more structured marvelous the you alluded uh to your time spent with tommy nutter for those of you who don't know uh in 90 well it was valentine's day of 1969 uh nutters of uh savile row opened up it was uh front of house was tommy nutter who's the very famous uh, almost revivalist of Savile Row. He kind of brought sexiness and pop star um, glamour to Savile Row and arguably revived it to a large extent. Um, you weren't there in 1969, no. but, <laughs> <laughs> but you did get to see a part of it. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a very exciting time to be a tailor on Savile Row, I'm assuming. Yeah, I had a great time. Working with Tommy was fantastic. I mean, I worked for Tommy Nutter when it was Tommy Nutter after the, the big split. And oh yes. So that was in the mid eighties until his death in ninety two. But yeah, it was great working there and the amount of pe different people you saw, the the different designs you saw. But everyone thought it was all like glamorous, great big wide shoulders and fancy gear, fancy clothing. But to be totally honest with you, most of our suits were <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the, yeah, I, I imagine a normal suit. And you um, were introduced to me by Nick Falks, because obviously I worked with Nick at the time. Um, and so, you know, you have dressed some of the kind of best dressed guys in the world. I mean, whether it's the Duke of Richmond, Nick, <laughs> me. Do you no, come into no, 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 my father. You dress my father now, yeah. uh, although that's my do. Um, uh, so what is, what, is it, what is it do you think that um, uh, you, you do that I think that, is, that particularly stands out? Because I know that, for example, with you and me, in terms of our collaborations together, 
Tweed has always played a really kind of significant part in what's really worked. Like the, we've done, you know, we, we, we played with lots of different fabrics, light, thick, heavy, soft, all sorts. Tweed seems to have worked really well and seems to be something that you have a kind of uh, a control over that, I, that, that, that a lot of tailors I would imagine struggle with. But what is it for you that you well, re resonates with you? Well, you come back with tweed. See, tweeds are easy to work with. You can work with a tweed, you can play about with it, you can, it's more pliable, you can put fullness in places. Because what <laughs> you don't realise is there's a lot more going to tailoring than just putting the seams together and sewing it all together. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of sewing goes on involved. <laughs> and this part alone, the front shoulder is three quarters of an inch smaller than the back shoulder and you push it on in fullness so you don't get pulls in your shoulders. Um, with a tweed, you could probably even go to an inch, inch and a quarter fullness on the shoulders and which brings the shoulder around it's just much nicer it's just more pliable to work the thing that i will say about coming to kendon haste is that the uh, the formalities that i think you find in a lot of several establishments which i don't knock i think that it's a great thing a lot of people love that uh you don't really find here it's a place of um uh, it, it's it's jovial there's levity at all times and you keep a uh, not not a casual relationship with your clients, but certainly a a friendly, informal, and um, uh, I, I guess quite close relationship with your clients. Ultimately, you you form to some extent a friendship with them, and and, and so they enjoy coming back to see you. Uh, you you don't it doesn't get in the way of your professionalism in terms of what you actually make. Um, but at the same time, the experience is different for somebody who may be intimidated by the formalities of other places in Savile Row. Yeah, because I've worked in a lot of places, obviously you mentioned Huntsman, <coughs> um, even Tommy Nutters to a certain extent, and Horace Curtis was very, very formal. You'd be met at a door by somebody and it would all be very, very starchy. And when John, Stephen and myself got together, I said, look, we're not going to do that now. We're going to keep it a lot more friendly. What you've got to remember is a vast majority of our clients we have been with us for many, many years. I mean, I've been in it 50 years. John retired a couple of years ago, and he was in it 60 years. So we got to know these people personally. You know, We were just in America, and we stayed at one of our clients' house while we were there. And we had to go to their children's wedding and weddings, not weddings, or <laughs> weddings. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes more than one these days. No, well, different children. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said, I just don't want that real stuffy atmosphere. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It mm. just doesn't work for us. We're quite friendly. It is quite jovial. A lot of people think when we're in the fitting room, sometimes we're having a little argument that's amongst us. It, it's not. It's not that. <laughs> it's just little My friend really. Max was getting married and his wedding suit was going to be picked up two days before he was going to be married. It's a blue navy suit. Terry has plenty of blue navy suits of all shapes and sizes, so he goes to the basement and gets out a pair of trousers that are ten times too big for my dear Max. Max goes into the changing room and emerges white as a sheet because his trousers that he thought he was going to be putting on that would fit immaculately that he needs to wear for his lovely bride were absolutely enormous. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I just, uh, things like that, I think, create a, an environment here that I, th I think people really take to, they love, because ultimately when they do leave with the garment, it's beautiful. Well, and sometimes the correct suit. Yes, sometimes the correct suit. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes with sleeves on as well. And uh, you ask, no, if, you ask if you ask far. nicely. You're asking too much now. <laughs> sleeves, um, and um, so, yeah, so, so, that, so that's a big part of the, the, the appeal, I think. And, and um, you know, we've, we've been working together a long time now. And um, it's, al it's always been like that. And so, you know, I'm delighted to be able to introduce people. But I'm... Th even more excited to try on my new brown tweed suit. So let's have a look. So we spoke to Terry out front and you got a bit of an introduction to him. And before he comes and takes a look at the jacket for this, which I thought was a final fitting, but actually it's pretty much ready. Uh, we have Siamba here. Now Siamba has come in, I mean, how many years ago was it that you joined? Actually six, but feels like 12. Yes, of course. Um, and uh, I, 
uh, think that she has become something of a pioneer in terms of here, in terms of changing up uh, the both the offering for women. Because as you can see, see number it's a one what makes and cuts the most amazing trousers she has here, uh, an innovative triple pleated trouser, uh, which I have not gone for this time. We've stuck to uh, my uh, my double pleats, but you cut these and you made these. So before Terry comes in, and we talk about the jacket. Can you tell? Uh, or can we go through? Uh, the trousers in terms of the details and the kind of house cut for Kent Hayson Lacta. So uh, we've gone for the double pleats, which we always recommend and we prefer. Single pleats tend to open. They kind of give you a sort of obviously midway between plain fronts and pleats, but for a proper full trouser, especially with brace tops, double pleats are the way forward. Mm -hmm. um, they're nice deep pleats. The seat, you can see that they're falling really well. We've also gone, which um, for the two inch waistband with the double button on the extension, which is really nice, it's a little bit more of a statement. Usually waistbands are about an inch and a half. With max. a single button or a... Or a hook and bar, hook exactly. And bar. There you That's go. really nice. So obviously pleats are PTUs, and we've gone for the nice chunky two inch PTUs to match the waistband, which is really nice, quite striking. So one thing that people talk about, and it is a oft debated point about tailoring, is the idea of break. Now, break is what happens to the trouser by the foot. So you can either have no break, which basically means it just sits completely you know, flat, and so the, the seam doesn't break at all when it uh, touches the foot. Whereas, as you can see with mine, it does. And break, I would say there's uh, a need for a little bit of it. Um, what's your take on the matter? It's uh, an important subject, so yeah, you know, really we, need to, we need so to clear we it up. we get asked about this all day long course we're tailors but um, trouser length and sleeve length on jackets which they will come to later is incredibly personal so I hardly ever have any break on my trousers but I get away with it with ladies tailoring and that's the look I go for I always think a little bit of break is smart but it's incredibly personal some people Terry wears his trousers with a heavy break and you'll notice as well so in New York or Washington the trou there is a trend in trouser length and how much break you do or don't have. So is there more over there or less? Less. Right, interesting. Yeah, so New York, everything's short, so that, yeah, during our trips I have to remember, I'm like, nope, we don't have break here, it's hardly break, we're trying to convince them to have a little bit of break. That's fascinating, I didn't yeah. realise that. Yeah, but um, so as you can see with mine, there is a little bit, and that's how I that's yeah, how, that is how I like it. I don't I won't want more than that because it would start to look baggy, and I think that kind of it a suit always has a centre of gravity. And uh, so when someone looks at it, their eye is drawn to a certain point in it. And in theory, it should be the kind of waist or along the chest. I think if you have too much break on the trousers, immediately eyes go down because it's just really, really, it just really stands out. So um, I'm thrilled with these. So thank you. But also with break, you can go, if you go too long or too short, they can make you look shorter. So if you don't have enough break, if you have too much, yeah. they affect your proportions. So that's one thing to watch out for. Without wanting to be too mean to the Prime Minister, who is short, he has trousers that barely that don't really touch his foot. That gives the illusion of him having height, because ultimately everyone looks at pictures of him and thinks he's too tall for his trousers. Just a point. Now, uh, at the risk of slightly losing my dignity in, in, in this particular question, you've, you've cut for me before, so when you are creating a pair of trousers for me, what, I mean, what is it that you need to sort of be taking into account? How do you cut it? So we say that measurements are just a guideline. You'll notice that when we take a new order, or even as we fit you, you change your posture, so posture figuration, the way you stand, if you've been on the laptop all day, we can see it straight away. We mm -hmm. can see when you've got an injury, we can see when you start lifting at the gym and you're lifting from your shoulders. I haven't been doing that. Yeah. Neither do we. But um, that's really what tells us everything. So yeah, figuration is key. So what's my figuration? <laughs> Dare I ask? <laughs> because you have things like drop shoulders, you have, you know, uh, um, uh, round front or round back, or um, yeah, all there's, there's all sorts of shorthand that tailors have. Yeah, so this is what we call rock of eye, by the way. So what happens is, is that something gets made up and uh, you, a tailor does measurements and the paper pattern fits those measurements but ultimately takes into account other aspects of the body that mean well that make the difference between something fitting and not fitting actually sitting on the body or not sitting on the body 
So transfiguration is less complicated than jacket, obviously, because there's less going on. We look at the way you stand, so you're quite straight-legged, so nothing wild or nothing to insult you about there. Good. But you can be knock-kneed, where your knees obviously go towards each other, which means we'll cut your trouser pattern differently. Or they bow, as so well. Legs can yeah, bow. So for example, to work here, part of the requirement is you have to have bow-legged. Is that right? We all do, yeah. <laughs> okay. Terry's got the... Well, Terry John, does have bow-legs. Yeah, John yeah. had... He even trumped him. So then that's at the point of when we're cutting the pattern, we adjust what we call a trouser wedge. So with knock-kneed, you wouldn't need the wedge because the knees are already doing what that wedge would do by pushing the cloth down. Marvellous. Have I gone too technical? No, I don't right? love that. And then bow-legged means you're fighting against the wedge so you need a bigger wedge but no fairly standard figuration I mean what we could look at here is like if you're hollow back or the way that your hips tilt slightly um yes it's you have nothing bizarre in terms of that so it's great just in terms from my point of view this it, it feels very nice it feels very secure around the stomach I you know sort of I'd, I like to sort of do everything to sort of avoid the dad bod, but I can't these days. So um, I, uh, I, I love double pleats just because it gives a lot more room, it's a lot more comfortable, especially when sitting down. And I think men overlook pleats in this sense because when you sit down, you have a lot of, like a lot of sort of, I guess, a sort of spaciousness and a kind of bit of give um, that it just makes things more comfortable when it comes to relaxing, whereas flat fronted just can be quite restrictive. Um, even though it's probably, I guess, it's still probably the more popular. Yeah, we're having people go for pleats more because that's why I say, do you want them slim and trim, so plain front, or pleats give you more room and they don't look like such a baggy trouser, but you do yeah. have the room and comfort. But we get it all day long where people are in the fitting room. They're like, no, can you get rid of this bit here in the fork? So I'm like, okay, fine, I'll pin it. Try and sit down in them. You can't. Yeah, so there you go. That's the, there's always finding the balance, but that's why we're here. We work Super. with you during fittings for Marvellous. Um, right, so, on to the jacket. So, Terry is here uh, to look at the jacket, to sign off on this um, uh, now almost, I think, finished suit. The first suit you made for me was in 2012. This suit patterns had to change probably quite a lot since then. I've probably gotten a little bit bigger, probably a little bit wider, all sorts of things. And yet, it's an immaculate um, piece of kit, don't you think? Well, it looks amazing. It looks it? really nice. So what we've gone for is the house tweed. So the Terry has a selection of house tweeds that's made at the Lovett Mill in Scotland. Uh, I have a very, very similar one to this that's the uh, blue basket weave that um, uh, I have as a, just a sports jacket. This is a full suit, my first brown suit, um, and cut in a way that I think would work beautifully both in the city and in the countryside. So anyone who says no brown in town, they're wrong, um, because this, I think, looks pretty much better than anything else that you could wear um, of any colour other than brown. Don't you think? Yeah, it's pretty good. And you, the tie goes really, really well with it. Well, I try my best with these sorts of things. Um, well, now, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> in terms of detailing, we've, we've slightly pushed the boat out a bit. So we'll start from the front. And t in terms of this sort of, the, the, the kind of the top half, it's fairly similar to what we've gone from before. We've had yep. lapels that are this wide. Uh, I have experimented with lapels with Terry over the years. We've done some really extreme versions, as you might have seen with the Dijon Skinner. Um, a video that we did that was uh, uh, and the Emma Willis one so we're wearing uh, a Terry suit there where the lapels are extremely wide this is a sort of more modest version and yet in terms of the market I think a little bit of an extension of what three and a half is the usual lapel width that you would get at a tailor that's on a single breasted double breasted probably be about four okay fine um, and then, but then when you get down to the bottom half, that's where it really starts to sort of, you know, jazz up, be a bit more disco. And we've got these extraordinary pockets. They're, um, if you see here, these are um, inverted pleats. So they kind of tuck in and a welt across the top of the uh, pocket. So we've not done this before. What made you think to put these in? Well, I think we've done, we've, yeah, what the world across the We've side. done inverted yeah, pleats before. we've done before. inverted pleats before. But I just thought we'd make it just slightly more formal. So if you put the Because I do like putting my hands in my formal. pockets as well. Yeah, and it makes um, it stronger as well. Yeah. So the, it gives a level of strength. And, I mean, it does, it is beginning, becoming to 
look like a sort of shooting jacket almost, like a North, <laughs> like a Norfolk jacket, we're getting there, aren't we? And I think that these, these are certainly aesthetic, but in, in terms of, from a, from a tailoring point of view, the, the, the things that he's done to make this look like it fits or, or, or fit better, this doesn't really play a part. What does play a part is on the back. So on the back, the details on the back, which we did slightly different with Tom on this one, was we put the half belt, which we've done in two and a quarter inches, just slightly bigger than a normal half belt, because obviously Tom's very tall, so everything has to be in proportion. Then we put these four little darts in here. The idea of the darts is to actually bring the waist in so it's got more shape. And then also at the same time, it gives you more width across here, because as you look at across, Tom's is huge across his back. So we need a lot of width across the back. And if you do it too much with just literally on the side seam, you end up looking starred and um, too sort of wasp waist, which we sort of don't really want to look like that. And then on the top, we did the four darts, just to match in with the, the four darts on the waist that are there. And we brought the collar. Can you look straight ahead a moment? You're looking down. The collar, so we've got three quarter of an inch showing on the shirt which is, I always think it's quite nice when you've got the collar slightly lower, you don't want it too high. The worst thing is if the collar's up there, it just looks awful. Very nice. Now, here's a crucial question. In terms of the, the kind of, for some people who are watching this, when they see this suit uh, and uh, it should be a kind of a representation of Kent Hayson Lacton to that sense, um, what, how does this um, oh, work within, well, how is this the house cut? Well, it's normally, it's all, a suit is what everybody, any tailor will tell you this, it's all collar, shoulders and sleeves. So if you look at our shoulder line, that is our shoulder line. You know, you get other companies that do very, very soft shoulders. We try to do this with a little bit of roping, not a huge roping. Some people put a massive roping on, but that's not really not ours. But it's really the shoulder line. This is our normal lapel. I mean, as you said earlier, we've done great big bellies on the lapels for you before. But this is our normal, we went a bit normal on this one, didn't we? Just, mm. although it's quite wide, it's it's a standard shape lapel, and which is our normal shape. Slightly low with a button in on a double breast. It's a smaller wrap. The idea of putting a smaller wrap on is because it gives you, it just makes the jacket not so bulky looking. Yep. The bigger wrap makes it look very, very bulky. And we've gone, you know, we've gone shape through the side, but we haven't given it that real hourglass where it shoots in and flares right out. Yeah. There's nothing, if you look at the sides, there's no flare on that at all. Yeah, it's got this wonderful, I mean, it's got great shaping through the sides there. Yeah, I think it's flat, it's flat, it was flattering. Yeah, it looks um, great. And, and obviously the key thing to note is balance. So everything to do with the jacket is all about balance. I mean, if the jacket's out of balance, it's the worst thing in the world yeah. because it's quite simple really. If it's too short in the back, see that's short in the back. See what I've done straight away. Yeah, I haven't altered it at all. Yeah, that's short in the back balance. If it's too long in the back balance. This will all sort of go like that. And it'll sit <laughs> off the back as well. And it will sit, sit off the back. neck. I mean, this is sitting on your neck. You've had it on for four hours now, and it hasn't moved. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so ceremonial ripping off of the thing. Ah, oh, the label comes off. Everyone no, is aware of that, aren't it? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knows. We went, <coughs> we did start, as you see on the label, we started off at a five and a quarter lapel, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We, we felt that was a bit over the top. So yeah. we ended up with four and three quarters. And I think it works beautifully. No, it looks really good, actually, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm really pleased with it. Really pleased. I actually got one right at last. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very intimate introduction to Kenton Haste. And um, I'm probably going to wear this out. So the fitting, as you can see, has changed Terry dramatically, changed him so much that his name has also changed and, and his profession. This is Stephen Lacter. Stephen Lacter is one of the great and preeminent shirt makers in London. And before we went, I wanted to make sure that I introduced him to you because Stephen, uh, you have made shirts for very important occasions for me, including my wedding. Uh, and uh, I wanted to introduce you to the Rake's audience uh, because if you're coming to London and you need a shirt made, then Stephen is a superb choice to come to. Uh, and Frank Sinatra would agree, wouldn't he? 
<laughs> no, I'm not sure if he still would. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'd have trouble articulating his feelings towards you. That's very kind of all those very nice words. Well, um, just 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 quickly, can we just sort of explain that we've we we've, we've done a video already on bespoke shirt making, and so the process itself is kind of familiar. But can you just sum up in or sort of praise your experience and your love? Um, for the art of shirt making? Well, it just comes, I suppose, really from the, from the guts. Uh, you know, it was when I, when I joined Hoyers and Curtis and I got introduced to Mr. Haste and Mr. Kent that I just naturally sort of flowed into it. It was uh, something that I really felt I liked and just carried on from there. And, it be and really, after all these years, it becomes natural to you it's part of you now is it right to say that out of the fact well out of the the pair of you you and terry you have to be that much more exacting because with shirt making there's no room for error whereas with suits there's all sorts of room for error well it's nice of you to say that i'm more important <laughs> um in a way because a shirt isn't structured like a jacket there's no padding there's um no, um, it's no inlay. sort of inlay or anything like that. It's something that you literally have to do to the body. And it depends on how the person wants it. You know, uh, skin fit, easy, halfway in between. It's all, you, you have to balance it out. It's mainly in the balance of the shirt, which is the important part. So that's why we take uh, figuration. And um, we sort of, we sort of maneuver around the pattern so that it's comfortable without being baggy, without being too tight. So that we take into consideration all the different things, all the drops and everything. A little bit more important because you only really get one shot at a shirt. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just like that. And over the years, you become more used to it. And you become more adept. And one day I'll get there. <laughs> it's like you said, the, the, the piece of advice you gave me about marriage is... Uh, the first 25 years are the hardest. Oh, yes, yes. I'm 35 <laughs> years so far. I'm still trying to find a reason. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Stephen. Really My appreciate pleasure. it. And thank you very much. Anything else you want to say about yourself? I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you can see, the fitting has aged Terry tremendously. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll cut now. <laughs>